Hello, welcome to the video for what is text, the two text node. So let's go ahead and jump right into this example. Our two text. If we go ahead and we type in two text, we're going to end up finding these six nodes that allow us to change text from one type to another. Now, normally you're not really going to worry about the conversion nodes for the two text because they're done automatically. Let's say, for example, we create a variable of string. This is a pretty simple one. And actually change it to string. We'll drag it out. Assuming I can drag, there we go. We'll get it. And let's say we want to put it in our text output box. Well, if we drag it and drop it, you're going to notice it says convert string to text. And it's automatically going to give us our conversion node. So normally you don't really think about it much. But let's cover these anyways because there's two special ones that are not used normally. So this is pretty simple. We have our to bool, our bool to text node, which basically outputs whether it's true or false, depending on if the bool is true or false. Pretty simple. Next one is our byte. This is basically going to convert a byte value into text. Now keep in mind a byte is normally 0 through 255, so it's going to be pretty simple to an integer output. But these all have inputs, so you might want to see what the value is of an enum, for example. Next one is our name to text. Pretty simple. It's just going to output whatever the name value is to text. And our last one is our string to text, which is the one example we had before, which just takes a string and converts it into a text. Now the last two are not done automatically, and these are where the more important versions are. We have our two text int and our two text float. Now the nice things about this is it allows us to actually modify an integer and a text value to change the output result rather than just a straight value. Because for example, let's say we had a, let's put a new variable, let's make a float. Let's go ahead and change this to a big number dot bunch of decimals. We'll go ahead and drag this out, drop it into here, and you notice it's going to convert. We'll hit play, and we see our value, which is really funky because it's not what we put in there. Well, the issue is it's using the formatting options. So let's go ahead and look at those. For an int, it's pretty simple. We put our int value in, and it's going to go ahead and output the int value. Now you have in here your advanced options. For an integer, it's going to be the use grouping. Use grouping basically will use the cultural sensitive setting on your computer for the grouping indicator. In the case of the United States, it's going to be our comma. So we have 10,000 indicated by the comma. And then you have the minimum integral digits and maximum integral digits. Integral is the number before your divider, the decimal case in English, in US. So this is the minimum and maximum number. So let's say I wanted to cap our number at 20. Oh, sorry, 20 as the value, which means two digits. So I put in two for my maximum digits and hit play. And now we see zero, zero. Because even though our value is 10,000, we're only going to show two digits, which is going to be our last two, which is zero and zero. So if we switch this back, of course, we can get our full 10,000 value. Now, to float, here's where the nice settings are. We have our rounding and our minimum and maximum fractional digits, which is the values after the decimal point. And this is where it's really nice and powerful. So let's say we had 100,000 and then our decimal number was 7,000. If we go ahead and pipe this in to our output and hit play, we're going to see 10,000.7, because apparently I can't count. Let's go ahead and make that 100 again. There we go. So we have 100,000.703. Now, why do we have that? Well, we have that because we've told it we want a minimum of 0 for our fractional and a maximum of 3. So we will only have a 700, or because of rounding and float precision, it's now going to show a 703. Let's say we want this to represent money, or we just didn't need that many fractional digits, or we wanted a countdown timer, and having it count down 0 0.70944 is weird. We set our maximum fractional digits, 
We can go ahead and hit play. And now you see it's 100,000.7. If we want to make it easier, we can use our grouping. And now it's very easy to see it's 100,000.7. And of course, if we had a countdown timer, maybe we don't want to use the grouping. Maybe we want to make sure there's a minimum integral digits, which will be, for example, let's say it's 0.7 thousand. We hit play. You'll now see 0 0.7. Because we've told it we want at least one number before the decimal, and we only want one number after the decimal. So, that's a great way of formatting your floats and your ints to be exactly what you want. Because, you know, like I said, you have a countdown timer. You're not going to need to see five numbers after the decimal. You might want to see zero after the decimal. You might have, for example, you want a countdown timer, which is a decimal, but you want it to only show a 10, 9, Eight. Well, it's pretty simple. You know, we have, let's say it's 100 point, well, I have 200 apparently. Let's go with 100.56. But we want it to be even. Go ahead and just set your maximum fractional to zero. Our minimum, we want to be at least one. We hit play, and now it's an even number 101. So there we go. That is the two text nodes for the text function. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.